DPFs, EGRs, AdBlue, and all that other crap. Thought I might make a video on that stuff today, guys. So let's let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again today. So I was just filling up with some diesel. I'm just on my way home from work and. I had to chuck some ad blue in the truck and I thought this would be a good chance to do another video um, on buying one of these American trucks in Australia and it's not just the American trucks but a lot of them are now even some of the ranges have the ad blue system and the def and all the rest of it and uh, just it's probably not so bad with some of the ranges because I haven't heard too much bad stuff with those or heard a lot of bad stuff about the Hilux um, but with these American trucks, before you run off and buy one, you need to be aware that you need to do a lot of like highway driving in these trucks as well, just so that regeneration can occur and you don't have all that carbon build up and all the rest of it um, in the DPF because that, that will cause a premature failure um, inside down there if you're doing a lot of just short trips um, city driving, all that sort of stuff. The truck really doesn't get a chance to heat right up and maintain a constant temperature to do that burn off inside the DPF. So as long as you're gonna be doing a, a decent drive every every few, few weeks, you're gonna be doing a nice long few hour highway drive, then you shouldn't really have any issues. Um, touch wood, F truck's been fantastic. Um, the only issue I've ever had with it was uh, I had the engine light coming up and when we put, when Ford here put the uh, scan tool on it, it was saying that the, um, there was a failure in the DPF uh, unit with the sensor and everything, but I found out that it actually wasn't a failure. And because these trucks don't necessarily have a gauge, um, just like your fuel gauge for the for the DEF um, or the Ad Blue or whatever you want to call it, it was saying that the um, the DEF was obviously low. So the Ad Blue was low in the tank, the diesel exhaust fluid, and um, there actually wasn't nothing wrong with the sensor. So I just made it a point to myself to every kind of. 3,000 Ks, 4,000 Ks to uh, top that up. I think Ford says that it's around 5,000 kilometers that you'll have to top that, that AdBlue tank up um, because it will it will obviously use itself. Um, it's not too bad. It's like every 4,000 Ks I'm spending $28 on this bottle of AdBlue. I know you can get it at the pumps and stuff now from BP and a few of the other service stations. But another thing with that is, if you're trying to wonder why the AdBlue um, on the pump keeps clicking off when you put it on, just like the diesel does, once your tank's full, it'll click off. Well, sometimes with these AdBlue systems on these trucks, there's no magnet on the actual neck of the filler. So basically what it's doing is it the, the pump thinks that your tank's full but what you need to do is go inside and the service station should give you a magnet that'll slide over the end of the hose if you want to fill it via the pump at the service station. So that'll just allow the, the ad blue to flow into the tank um, just in case anybody's wondering about that. So, Which gets me onto another topic is uh, where diesels are heading and how restricted they're becoming because it's just getting worse and worse. I know Ford's just released this new engine, this new um, uh, 7.3. So, is it an engine that I'd consider? Depending on how bad all this DPF and all this sort of shit gets, it's, it is probably an engine that I'd seriously consider going back to a uh, petrol or gas engine, um, depending on what the numbers are. At the time of this video, they, they haven't released any numbers on that engine yet. But um, it's definitely something that I think that I'd consider. Um, 
just because I don't want this premature failure of this truck. I don't want it to become an issue and and all the rest of it. So I really, really can't wait to see what those numbers on that engine are and what it does like per 100 kilometers with the fuel ratings and stuff like that and whether it's compatible with this truck I have now. Um, obviously it's not probably gonna have the uh, the torque and everything that this thing's got but at the end of the day if it can do what I need it to do and it's not going to be stressed out then um, it's definitely an engine that I'd uh, consider going with in, in my next truck if I do buy a Ford. So it's just some of the issues with having the DPF system and everything on your truck is what it's basically halving the engine's life. So an engine that should last 400,000, 500,000 kilometers, like the old school diesel engines do, that like these engines are basically halving their lives because they're basically ramming themselves with all their own emissions and all their own carbon and all their own shit and EGR and they're just ramming all the shit that's supposed to go out of the engine back into it again. And basically these, these engines are, are half the life that they used to be. And I, I don't want to be a skeptic or anything, but it seems like it's a good way to turn around more trucks. It's like you buy a truck, the, the owner doesn't obviously have it for as long. And um, yeah. So they're basically sell, selling more trucks via it. The the whole the whole thing, I think, is a load of crap. But it's just, what do you do? It would, we don't really have any options. They're all going this way. And to be honest, I think it's just a reason to sell more engines and sell more trucks. And yeah, it kind of sucks because back in the old days, engines would last. You look after them, they'll last forever. But these things are just, just completely yeah obviously just grenading themselves after half the lifespan that they really should get but i'll just touch briefly on what i mean when i talk about the regeneration so basically the dpf and everything on these trucks build up with a lot of carbon and unburnt uh, fuel and, and all this sort of crap and instead of it just going straight at the tailpipe it gets caught up in that dpf and then the, the truck basically does a full regeneration and burns all that shit off and then sprays the ad blue um, before the exhaust comes comes out the back um, basically turning into to, to breathable air so as we all know that the, the nasty black soot and all the rest of it from diesels it's not good for you it's it's very unhealthy and I don't like that it's on this truck but it's just it's something that we're all having to deal with now it is getting more and more regulations, a lot more semis and stuff that are coming out. A lot of the Hino tippers, um, even the, the utes now have got it. Um, so it, it is becoming a problem. You just need to make sure that you're doing those really few hours on the highway, solid driving, so the vehicle can have that regeneration and have a chance to heat right up. Because those DPFs get so hot with their regeneration and they burn all that shit off that, that, that's, that's caught from coming out of the engine and then uh, yeah out the tailpipe it goes gets sprayed with the urea the ad blue whatever you want to call it and um, yeah just doesn't let all those uh, toxic fumes and uh, emissions into the, uh, the atmosphere so that's basically just a quick brief version of what those things do if anybody was wondering but um, a lot more of the Utes are now coming out with that with that stuff, and uh, unfortunately, it's just uh, part of trying to look after the environment. And I've had a lot of people ask me if I was going to do a delete on this thing, and I just I don't I don't want to mess with it. There's not enough people here in Australia that understand this engine, this truck, the way it works. There's a lot of guys in the states that do deletes on these things all the time. But that's simply the reason I'm not deleting this because not that I don't trust anyone to delete it for me. It's just the fines are ridiculous. Um, if you get caught, this does have to have an inspection next year. Um, it's first inspection to get registered. So that'd throw a spanner in the works. Um, 
and I just don't think it's something I want to deal with. Um, I start having issues and engine lights coming up and I know you can tune all that stuff out, but so to really be honest, I just don't, I don't think it's worth it for me because this truck's got 86,000 kilometers on it already, uh, just about to hit 87,000. And I'll probably keep this truck till it's about 150, 200,000, and then I'll move it on and get a new truck. I don't really tend to keep my, my vehicles any longer than that um, because that's when you start having long-term maintenance issues and um, and bits and pieces. So and it's stuff I just don't want to deal with. I'll just get rid of it, sell the truck while it's still in good condition. I can get a good quid for it. Nothing wrong with it. And I'll uh, yeah update to a, uh, a newer truck and start all over again and. To be honest, uh, I like doing that. I like to have a, a, a truck for a good 200,000 kilometers, do all my modifications to it, drive it and enjoy it for like the last 150,000 kilometers that I own it. Because most of the times I get all the modifications done within kind of 50,000 uh, Ks and then enjoy it for the rest of the time uh, that I've got the truck doing everything I want to do with it and then uh, move it on and uh, start the whole process again because it's fun, we all, we all, we're all into it. We love doing up trucks and stuff like that and uh, off-road vehicles and four-wheel drives and no matter what you drive, we all, we all love that, those modifications and doing the mods to our four-wheel drives and it's, it's why we do it and we love to do it and we love to be individuals and we love to, to yeah, have our own unique twist on things with our vehicle. Uh, it's probably not worth me doing a delete on this thing, and I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't think I, I ever will delete it. Um, I just keep the ad blue topped up all the time, like I said. Um, make sure I'm doing, like, I do a lot of highway driving, so I should never really have any issue, touch wood, um, because I give it that chance to do the regeneration, and I see it come up on the dash all the time that it's uh, cleaning the exhaust filter. So, um, yeah, just another heads up, guys. Just buying these American trucks, you just need to be aware of that. Don't go buying one if you just live in bloody Sydney or, or Brisbane and you're just driving around town all the time because if you're going to keep the truck for a long-term period, you may start to develop issues with that system and it's frigging expensive to have anything fixed on it. So just a heads up there. And um, I know companies like Toyota and that with the Hilux, they're having uh, major issues with their DPF systems. And I was following a brand new Hilux the other day, like you would have had it just been just off the lot. When you follow on a new ute and you see all that underneath, it's all still shiny and all the rest of it. And blowing black smoke everywhere. I just, yeah, I couldn't believe it, like how, how bad it was. So they've definitely got issues. I haven't heard too many issues about the ranges and stuff. Thank God the Raptor. It doesn't have a DPF or AdBlue system on it, so I don't know how they got away with that, but yeah, obviously there's a uh, some sort of law there that um, Ford end up getting around, but um, Australia I don't think is completely right up on the legislation yet for that stuff. I think it's basically if your vehicle comes with it, then you need to leave it in there. I think that's basically how the legislation in Australia works. I can't quote, quote, quote on that, but... Um, yeah, that's as far as I'm concerned that it works. Is just basically, if your vehicle is, comes from the manufacturer with a AdBlue DEF system, um, EGR, blah, 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 it has to remain on the vehicle. Um, otherwise, there's fines. If I think it's $100,000 or $10,000 or something like that. I'm pretty sure it's $100,000. It's pretty, pretty astronomical. So, really something I don't want to be paying for when I could buy a new truck with that. So up yeah. on what I'm doing this weekend so I'm going to pull the deck system out probably this afternoon when I get home just to save me a bit of time on the weekend doing this video I don't think you just want to see the deck system come out I'm pretty sure you probably want to see it installed um, because that's probably what most of you guys are doing you're probably not pulling a deck system out you're probably interested in buying one and seeing how they go in so I'm going to pull it out the Savo save me a bit of time might clean the uh, bed rug and everything and then I'll pull the bed rug on the weekend when I start the video and start getting all this stuff installed. So we've got the uh, deck system coming out, the bed rug coming out. Um, I've gone and bought a heap of sticker flex, gone and bought some um, expandable foam to fill up some of the bigger holes in the tub and stuff where the dust is going to come in. Um, and yeah, I've bought some really strong 
um, basically duct tape. It's like industrial strength duct tape to cover up some of the holes and stuff. Clean all those with um, alcohol and um, get it nice and clean and then put the tape over the top and that'll stop any future dust coming in. Um, it'll be a long time till that tape wants to fall off or anything like that if all the preparation's done properly. So, But it should be a really cool video, guys. Anyone that wants to put a canopy on themselves and doesn't really want to pay someone to do it, just a good heads up on how to clean your tub properly, how to seal it from the dust, what you should look for with holes and other bits and pieces on your tub. And um, yeah, then we'll go ahead once I've got it all sealed up, get the bed rug back in when she's all clean, and then we'll do the, the uh, video, we'll be in the video, putting the uh, deck system back in, tying all that down the way it's uh, meant to be, and then we'll um, pop this big box open and get this bloody snug top canopy out have that in put that on have that installed and um yeah just go over everything make sure she's all sealed and then I'll, the only thing i'll have to do is i'll have to get some um bloody 3m sided uh dust seals and stuff like that for around the outside of the tub and stuff to help seal that up um, that's another thing that, that you're probably gonna have to do as well is, is try and seal that tailgate the best you can a bunch of different kits and stuff you know you can get out for most of the utes on ebay and stuff they sell a pacific kit with the right amount of um, dust sealant and all this sort of stuff and everything you need to uh to seal that that type of tailgate for your vehicle so there's nothing i could find for the f truck um there was a couple in the states but i don't really want to wait for it i can just go down to clark rubber and buy the stuff i need so anyway guys i hope you are having a awesome wednesday I'm just pulling in at home now, and I will, uh, yeah, see you guys on the weekend. So, catch you later.